Big part of energy power climate change topic uh, talks about uh, electricity generation. So we're first going to do it in general, and then I'm going to show you a more specific example. So in order to generate electricity, uh, the very first thing you need is an energy source. Okay, so that's what we need first. Now this energy source can be all sorts of different things. I mean, this could be, for example, um, it could be steam, it could be fossil fuels, so things like, uh, you know, what we dig out of the ground, like coal and stuff like that. We can have uh, nuclear, we can have wind, we can have wave, we can have hydroelectric, so that's often connected to a dam. So basically we have some sort of energy source. Okay, that's the key thing. You have to sort of, you have to start with the source of energy. Now what we do with this, uh, we may have a lot of different ways of doing this part, but the end part right here, this is really cool because they all actually do essentially the same thing. We take some energy here, and what we do is we try to basically, we turn a turbine. That's the key thing that we're doing here, okay? We're turning a turbine. So in other words, we're using this energy to turn a wheel. Now this uh, turbine, that's basically, that makes it in the form of uh, kinetic energy here. So we turn a wheel uh, with turbine here. Now what we do with this though is that uh, we have a wheel that's basically, it's got a bunch of magnets on the end of it. And so we're using the energy from the fuel source to just turn a wheel that's all we're doing. That's all any of these really do here. It's just using it to turn some sort of wheel of some kind. Now, why do we do that? Because at the end of that wheel, see, we want electricity. So what we do is we put magnets along the wheel. So that as we move around then, the magnets are moving. And in uh, something that in uh, physics HL uh, we call electromagnetism, uh, we have this process that a moving magnet actually creates electricity. So what you do then is, by turning the turbine with magnets on it, you end up then, then you generate electricity. Whoops, I should probably write this in white then. That means you generate electricity. So this is the basic process here that happens. Okay, so you use some energy. And now, um, I think I talked about this before, but in Denmark, um, we have lots of bike riding and I ride my bike everywhere I go. And like I said before that um, I've got a little system where my bike light is completely powered by me and uses this exact precise same idea that on my bike, you know, I've got you know, my wheels here and then here's, I guess I better draw this somewhat uh, correct here like this and like this, you know, this is how my bike sort of goes like this and here's my seat and here's my handles. So what I do then is um, I've got little magnets that I've put on the, I've actually got a magnet here and a magnet here. So what happens is as my wheel turns, you know, these are connected to the spokes, as my wheel turns, it passes by this little device right here. And this device, that one's fixed to the fork. So what happens is this device is still, and as the wheel turns, these magnets go by this device. And the neat thing is, is that uh, we use this electromagnetic effect that as we have a moving magnet in a very special situation here, um, then what we end up happening is, uh, what we end up having is we generate a current, which means we can then have electricity and that means we can power a little bike light. So on my little bike, that same process, me using my own energy, you know, by biking hard, I'm doing the same exact thing that a power generator does just on a very small sort of crappy scale, right? But a power generator does the same idea. You take s different forms of energy and you use that to turn a turbine. And a turbine means it's a wheel with a magnet at the ends. Lot, maybe lots of magnets, maybe just one or two. In my bike, I just have two magnets. And then you use that to generate electricity. That's how it works. That's as easy as it is. Now, the next thing I want to talk about then is uh, nuclear not nuclear, but nuclear. So there we do that same idea. So we take, just to go into a little bit more detail maybe, we use nuclear energy, right, which is uh, in this case in the form of um, 
Well, what we just talked about in the last unit, where we have um, a reaction happening, and every time there's a reaction, you're making new um, particles, and those new particles that are made, uh, they also release energy. So that energy that's released, that's nuclear energy. Okay, so you start off with that. And then what do you do with nuclear energy? Well, you convert that to thermal energy. In other words, the nuclear energy gets converted to heat. And what you actually do, it's really crazy, it sounds so simple and stupid, but we use this fancy nuclear reactor just as a form of heat. We just use it as a really big, really efficient, powerful heater. And all we're heating is water. So we uh, end up making steam. The steam then turns the turbine. So that's going to be kinetic energy. And that then through electromagnetism, what I just talked about, that gets you electricity. Isn't that crazy? That's all that uh, happens in a nuclear reactor is that you just use nuclear energy to give you heat. And what you do then, I mean, uh, it's worthwhile looking this up and making sure you can do these drawings, but it's a good idea to be able to draw what goes on uh, inside a reactor. But the rough idea is that you have a reaction that happens it's actually controlled by neutrons. And it turns out there's fast neutrons and slow neutrons. And the idea here is that you want to control, so each time you have one of these reactions happening, uh, you have uranium, let's say 238, or usually it's 235. But you have uranium of some kind that's having a reaction. It's having that reaction because you throw a neutron in. And it turns out a neutron plus this uranium makes a reaction. The reaction gives you stuff plus energy, plus two neutrons. And you see those two neutrons can then go around and start a new reaction. Each of them starts a new one. So you see how you start off with one neutron, it makes stuff plus heat plus two neutrons. Those go in and make two times stuff, two times heat, and now you have four neutrons, and so on and so on. We call this a chain reaction, right? Because one of the products, the neutrons that comes from this uh, reaction goes in and feeds a new reaction. So that's what we call a chain reaction. Now what happens then in this reactor is that you may want to control that. So what you can do is you can have control rods. So what they do is they actually put you know, the, uh, the uranium or whatever fuel they're using in sort of these long rods. They make these pellets out of it and they put them all together and they have um, yeah, what's called a tamper, but in any case, they have these things that are all standing up. And what they do is between them then, they put these carbon rods. And these carbon rods, what they can do is they can absorb the neutrons, which means if you want to slow down the reaction, just put these rods in and basically, you know, sort of suck up the neutrons, which means you can't start the reaction again. But if you take the, lift these rods up, then you have more and more reaction, which means it gets hotter and hotter. So basically these carbon rods, they're often called control rods, as you bring them lower in, they can basically stop the reaction or slow it down. As you raise them up, more and more reaction happens, so it gets hotter and hotter. So you can basically control your reactor just by these rods going up or down. But the whole idea behind this is just to get heat. That's all we're trying to do in all of these cases, but especially in nuclear energy. Nuclear just happens to be really, really efficient, has a very high energy density. So because of that, it's a very good source of energy. Now we use nuclear uh, fission in this case. We don't yet know how to do fusion properly in a reactor. So what we do then is we convert that energy into steam in this case. And the reason why we do that is what we do is along the reactor, you just pass some pipes with water in them. And what happens is, of course, the reactor gets really hot, it heats up the pipes, and the water in the pipes just becomes steam. The steam then is just used, you just run some steam, you know, in front of it's like a paddle wheel almost, so that the steam can just push a wheel, basically. You know, you have a wheel with little sticks sticking out of it, and the steam sort of pushes on this one, pushes on the next one, pushes, so it makes the wheel turn. That, tur that turbine has magnets on it, so you use this effect, like on my bike here, where uh, as you turn that thing, as the magnets turn, then you get electricity. That's it. It sounds actually quite simple, 
Uh, and actually it is. In, pr in practice, it's maybe more difficult. But the theory behind it and the, the basic mechanics behind it is very simple, right? Just take some source, turn a turbine, make electricity. Done. 